What is up, everybody? Welcome to the feast, episode number 88. I am your host, Delphius. How's it going, guys? I am doing well. Been a while since we've had a proper feast, huh? I think, uh, I was looking at my, my VODs here, and, uh, it's been about two months. Been about two months since we had a feast of Roni, and, uh, I apologize, I didn't really advertise this much. Um, kind of impromptu feast here, I decided, eh, why not? I was in the mood for some tooth and tail. So figured I would come say hello to you guys, and gals, and everyone else out there. Um, I'm excited, there's a lot of cool stuff uh, coming down the pipeline here uh, for Tooth and Tail. Now, in my defense, it has been two months since a, <laughs> a proper feast, but I have been doing a lot for the 12 Duels Challenge, which was a ton of fun. Uh, maybe if you're new and hadn't heard of that, definitely check out the Discord. I know the gentleman um, was talking about putting together like a YouTube uh, playlist. If one of you wonderful nerds in the chat happens to have that, feel free to link it. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, so that was a ton of fun, man. Uh, I casted a lot of it. Tosh, Big Pimp and Tosh, aka Witty Pun7, who has been very, very active uh, streaming lately and doing things in the community, uh, also uh, streamed some of it, and Mishi streamed some of it as well. You now, Tosh and Mishi were also bosses in the tournament. Uh, so that was a ton of fun. I'm a big doofus, and I forgot to <laughs> highlight one of the VODs, so unfortunately I lost one of the videos to the ether, but the rest of them are there. Um, and I was I was mad because I was like, oh, I'm sure I have the uh, the past broadcast, you know, downloaded on my computer, but I, I just built a new computer not too long ago. And unfortunately, I did not click in OBS, uh, <laughs> you know, make sure to save everything that I streamed, so... Lost that one, but no big deal, I hope. <laughs> Anyways, that was a lot of fun. Uh, definitely check that event out if you haven't already. But before we get to the replays tonight, I did want to shout out a couple things. Uh, we have a new event uh, coming around here shortly. The Old vs. New uh, Tooth & Tail Community Tournament. Uh, this is going to be streamed and hosted by WittyPun7, a.k.a. Big Pimpin' Tosh, on September 15th. And I always love, like, I've been doing Tooth & Tail events for a while. I was actually thinking about it just a minute ago. And I think I've been a part of every event since launch, at least as, like, a host or a caster. I, there was three events that I played in. So I played in um, Jet Erickson's Free For All Tournament, which was a big meme fest. And then I played in Tooth and Tail League Seasons 1 and 2, I believe. Um, but I was talking to, to Big Pimp and Tosh about this. I, I think Blue Coon is also involved. And, um, you know, I told him, yeah, I'll be a part of it. And offered to, to cast. But I think they, uh, they're they dead set on me being part of the, the old team. So I will be playing in this tournament, which I'm actually really excited about. Because hosting and casting is a lot of fun. I'm always happy to do it. But... You know, playing in these events is, is so much fun, man. Like, there's no, at least for me, like, the adrenaline rush you get when you're competing, oh, man, it, it, it's a blast. It's what it's all about. Um, and don't be shy to sign up for this, guys, even if you are a new player or beginner. Uh, there's going to be pe plenty of people on both teams. And the idea with this tournament is that we're going to kind of put together, <clears throat> like, groups of players uh, that fall into the old player category versus the new player category. And those players are going to form teams, uh, which will be put through a series of best of three matches uh, to kind of determine who wins. The Blue Coons have been doing a lot. I, I apologize, I don't fully understand the format because there is a lot of like, uh, you know, like seeding the players and, and ranking them based on maybe their ladder score or the KML um, ladder ranking as well. Um, so there's there's a lot that's going on behind the scenes on trying to make the matches as even as possible and The last I heard the new team uh, needs a couple more heroes on it So so don't be shy if you're if you fall into the newer category uh, You'd probably have to look through the details to determine kind of where the cutoff is uh, for, for players that are considered old versus new um, you know in a nutshell if, if you kind of You've, you've been playing since launch or shortly after, you're probably considered an, an old player uh, versus somebody who maybe started like a year ago, perhaps they would be considered new, but don't quote me there. Uh, all the all the information 
is on the Discord. Um, and by the way, if you guys are not in the Pocket Watch Discord, definitely get in there. Uh, that's where all this fun information about events and, and tournaments and hooking up with other players uh, to, to do matches and stuff is at. Uh, so really cool. I'm going to announce this a couple times throughout the night. Man, I love uh, Glorious AFB. And he is such a good artist. Uh, definitely check out his Twitter. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to put his Twitter on on the page. I think uh, somewhere in my details. I need to. Um, I need to update my details for sure with the new event that is coming up. And I also like to give him a shout out, man. Glorious AFB is a wonderful artist. He's always ready to roll. It's crazy how quickly he gets this kind of thing done too. Right? Like like when a new event's coming up. I'll, I'll reach out to him. Hey, you want to do some art? And like a few hours later, bam, just something wonderful like this. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm excited to be a player in this event. It's going to be a lot of fun. So don't be shy. Uh, sign up. You can find out how to do that in the tournament section of the Discord. It's the pinned message there. And what else do we have going on? We've got a uh, balance patch Aroni coming up here shortly. Uh, I figured I would go over this uh, just very, very quickly. I'm sure most people who are <laughs> watching this probably are, are more involved or, or know more about this than I do. Um, but I do like to kind of give my two cents on, on the balance patch uh, when it's proposed. So uh, the squirrel, uh, 0 0.1 cast time down from 0 seconds, 0 0.9 cooldown from 1, and uh, movement cooldown. So I think the idea with this squirrel change here is... Um, it's really hard to retreat in modern Tooth and Tail, and I, I think this squirrel change is probably trying to address that. You know, squirrels are just so good at chasing units down, and you know, some you know, it, it kind of makes sense in, in a way. But I also like the idea of being able to retreat. Um, it, it can come up in a variety of circumstances. Like the general rule of thumb in competitive Tooth and Tail at the moment is kind of like once you commit or if somebody engages on you. Like, even if it's a bad engagement, most of the time you're better off just kind of holding your ground and uh, and trying to fight rather than run away. So I think that's what this squirrel change is kind of aimed at, to give a little bit more versatility to engagements, to allow some, you know, backing up, disengaging, that kind of thing. I could be wrong. Totally could be wrong, but that, that's what I think. Toads are getting a little bit of love here. Uh, a little bit of HP buff. Um and changing i believe we're going back to the way that toads worked previously with uh with a larger aoe radius uh really cool to see toads have kind of fallen out of the meta on the current patch so i like the change I, i've always been a big fan of, of toads um I, I think they're a really good answer well it, i think design wise they're they're a really good answer for uh, dealing with you know, heavy tier one play, you know, squirrel toad versus just straight squirrel. You know, if the toads get some good engagements, that should be able to really change the uh, flow of the skirmish. However, there is counter play where your opponent can, can target fire down those toads before they hit. And that, that, to be honest, like, I really enjoyed casting that kind of meta uh, because it made for some really exciting situations. You know, like watching guys like Chip, you, you know, like target down. Um, the toads individually and you're just like damn you know they really deserve that win there and you nice micro uh, pigeons looks like are getting uh, a bit of a nerf here which I kind of like I, I've never been a huge fan of the you know stack a whole bunch of, of pigeons kind of play style will only stack three heals per tier that's kind of interesting to me I wonder if that will help one, th one thing with pigeons that I'd like to see is them kind of prioritizing higher tier units so that's not necessarily what's happening here um, but with the fact that you know multiple pigeons can't stack up on a squirrel you know for example as they used to you know perhaps that 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 pigeon healing is going to go to that badger or that boar uh where where you kind of wanted it in the first place so i think that's pretty cool skunk getting a bit of love i i think this is reasonable uh skunk got hit pretty hard uh, when it was changed to where you couldn't quote unquote like pre gas engagements um, by via you know the, the skunk kind of attacking the enemy's commander right so I, I, I think most people agree with that change I could be wrong I personally from a design perspective like that concept um, but the skunk does need a little bit of love to, to compensate because that was a big you know big portion of, of where the skunk got its power so getting a bit of HP here 
uh, getting a little extra gas duration. Um, the formation priority, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend I know what this means, but I assume it has something to do with the way uh, units kind of naturally form um, when you put them at rest. Uh, so you can see some formation priority to the chameleons and snakes. Maybe a little bit of quality of life kind of change. The boar crit going from f uh, down to four from six. I think it's a good start. <laughs> I don't think I'm the only person who like laughs hysterically at how quickly uh, boars wreck warrens. So uh, a little bit of nod from, from Eel here saying maybe that is a bit too much. And, and going down on the structure crit a little bit. Uh, my, my fox here are getting a little bit of love. I'm always a fan of that. Uh, a little bit of extra damage here. And uh, the cast time going up, but the root time going down, I, I, I think that's fine. I, I'd rather a little bit of a longer cast time versus a root time. I, I feel like that's a little bit more microable. Uh, barbed wire is getting a bit of love to try to, to get him back in the meta. Uh, some extra DPS here. No longer damages structures. I think is hilarious. I don't think I've ever seen a situation where barbed wire damaged a structure, but hey man, <laughs> I haven't seen everything. Uh, so that seems a little more quality of life than, than balance or, or meta, but I like it. I, I, I'm always for buffing units that aren't super in the meta. Uh, Bullet Hive, getting a bit more DPS, uh, getting a little bit less HP. I think that's cool. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of turret. Uh, my favorite units in the game have been for a very long time Fox, Ferret, and Turret, so any turret changes that are positive, I'm like, yay! A little bit of HP nerf. Um, I, I guess it makes sense with the increased DPS. I think the issue with turrets in the current meta, though, is, is all the units that can crit structures, like the moles and things like that. Um, Balloon getting a bit of a quality of life. Uh, change here, uh, a little bit of an aggro range adjustments, and tier 1 warrens dropping some HP while tier 3 warrens are gaining some HP. The tier 3 warren gaining HP, I think that's really cool. I like that. I'm skeptical on dropping the tier 1 warren HP. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not against it, I'm just skeptical. Maybe it's aimed uh, to help deal with, uh, you know, Def uh, defender's advantage, but we'll see how it plays out. Okay. I think everybody's tired of hearing me talk. Uh, but yeah, man, that, that glorious AFB artwork is amazing. Um, I would love, love, love to see you guys give him a like or a follow or however it works on Twitter. And he's a very talented artist, always always willing to step up to the plate and, uh, and do some artwork for the community. Okay, so if you're a long-time viewer of this show, you are going to be as shocked as I am to see game number one. There was a very long time near the beginning uh, where I'd have, like, a Vincent versus Bratmo game, like, every single week. Like, those were the kind of the two... You always knew there was going to be a premium bow 2v2, which uh, has continued, and you always knew we would start off with Vincent versus Bratmo, and the other day, Vincent uh, sent me a replay, uh, so I figured, uh, for old time's sake... I would start him at the top of the list, and we'll start it like we did in late 2017 with a little bit of Vincent versus Bratmo. All right, let's get into it. <clears throat> okay, spawning on the left, we've got Vincent. <clears throat> and his opponent to the right, Bratmo. All right, let me be a professional streamer and can mute, mute my mic before I cough. You've been doing the feast ever since 2017? Yeah, I started creating Tooth and Tail content like a couple of weeks after the game launched. I have been around for, for quite a while. Um, like I said, yeah, there, I, I think I've only missed a couple events. I think I've been involved in, in every Tooth & Tail event as a host or a caster or a player um, post-launch. But before launch, Clash of Comrades uh, was on the scene, and they were phenomenal, man. I mean, their their production value was, was unrivaled. Uh, there, there's still a lot of great content on YouTube. I mean, the balance patches are old, but you get the gist of it. Um, really high quality stuff, the Clash of Comrades guys, and, and when I when I first started out, I, I collaborated a lot with them, and uh, and kind of went from there. And I, I still keep in touch with old AB Ultima from the Clash of Comrades uh, scene, kind of drag them out 
of the Meyer every now and then to do an event with me. He's always happy to do it. But uh, this game, we've got some aggression going on. Vincent going for a six farm triple here in, in some very aggressive positioning. Uh, he needs to make sure to get something done. At the very least, uh, not mess up his, his positioning on the map with this. And Bravo has a nice response. Like, did Bravo scout it? Yeah, he scouted it. Okay. I actually really like the positioning here of this turret and the Warren. And this is actually looking really good for Bratmo. That second turret, I'm a little bit skeptical on, but I, I really do like that first one. And let's see how this defense plays out. Keep in mind, Vincent did sacrifice a couple farms to do this. And he did get one pig from his opponent, but that turret is doing so much work. It eventually goes down, but uh, it, it definitely bought and paid for itself, so... I think Bratmo's okay, and I don't think Vincent's in the worst spot either. He did kill a pig, he did kill a turret, and he and he did some trading there. I think Bratmo came out on top, uh, but Vincent's definitely still in this game. Really needs to get that 8th farm though, there it is. I actually wouldn't mind him selling off one of these warrants to prioritize that farm. But he wants to keep this aggression on, which might be the right call because if Bratmo is kind of... You know, figured, okay, the storm has been weathered here. This follow-up attack could do a lot of damage, and that turret in the south is not helping Bratmo out, unfortunately, as Vincent pounds his way through the front doors of Bratmo's base, getting a couple pick, pick kills here. Unfortunately, his commander did go down, uh, so the rest of this army will get cleaned up. But three pigs... Was it three pigs, or did he never rebuild this, this, this uh, western one? Not quite sure, but either way, uh, that follow-up attack got a lot more done. I wish Bratmo would have, like, sold this turret and replaced it here, you know what I mean? Um, but it can be a pain, and unfortunately for Bratmo, like, he, he might have kind of forgot about that turret, right? Because it's, like, placed right under that tree, so it's a little bit hard to, hard to see if you're not paying super, super close attention. And these are just fun, casual games, so... Um, Vincent laying down a couple mines, he's getting really aggressive here. He's taking this gristmill, which will be a nice tank gristmill that he can kind of fall back on. And it also expands his territory here, so his units uh, will enjoy that healing a, a bit closer to his opponent's base. And he's going for it, man. He's uh, building some moles up on the front, and I think he's going to come in for a big squirrel mole push. If, if things start not going his way, uh, you can retreat back to these mines. And, and that's what I was talking about right there, where it's really hard to retreat in Tooth and Tail. Like, Vincent suffered a lot, a lot of damage. Uh, just simply pulling his squirrels back. So I, I think that's what the new squirrel change is, is going to try to adjust a little bit. And on the back of that retreat, Bratmo is actually pushing forward here. Uh, this tanking gristmill is going to buy Vincent some time. He needs to be careful with his units and not kind of let him just limbing forward and die. However, he thinks he's got enough. And I think Bratmo probably could have taken that, but he decides to back out for now. And Bratmo is not rebuilding farms here. Um, he really wants to break his opponent's back and just straight up win this game. I am so tickled that we have a Vincent versus Bratmo, Bratmo match. It, again, if anybody's been watching me for a couple years, like, this, this was how we started every feast back in the day. I, I guarantee you, Without exaggerating, we probably started at least like 20 feasts with uh, with Vincent and Bratmo, so really cool to, to see them picking the game back up again and joining some Tooth and Tail. What's interesting about these players is like they never, for the most part, like they always just play against one another, you know, and it's always really back and forth, which is cool to see. Like it's not, all, it's not, you know, they're, they're both pretty evenly matched, but I'm getting worried for Bratmo here. Both players going for some ferrets. Uh, which will be nice to poke. Vincent's not in position to micro his units, so this ferret actually already got three squirrel kills. That's absolutely huge. And we've got Squirrel Toad versus Squirrel Mole. Both players having some ferrets. And again, I'm starting to get worried for Bratmo. We passed that five minute mark, so the economies are starting to dwindle. Vincent does have that second base. Vincent has been my Oh, but his positioning on his ferrets was a little too far forward. Bratmo immediately dunks on those. Uh, Toad's blowing up on him, but hey, he gets the tier 2 units. However, Benson still has a ton of squirrels left over. Manages to pick up one of Bratmo's ferrets. <laughs> nice little mole warren positioning down there, by the way. Uh, maybe he was going to try to do some kind of sneak attack. Man, Vincent's going for the throat. That gristmill is so low. Oh, man. He almost just straight up won the game, but that, that bloodlust, that, that C in red right there, 
might have cost him everything as he as he really YOLO'd onto that Grismill with his entire army. And now he's got like nothing left. The counterattack for Bratmo is coming in. QQBP record stands at 4750. Are you serious? Have you guys been keeping track of that many games? If so, that's amazing. Oh, Vincent! Oh, Vincent! My hero! I got distracted by chat a little bit, but at the end, with that little mole warren to the south that I pointed out, Vincent was able to get in there and gank that warren uh, when it looked like all hope was lost and took the match. Awesome. What a good way to start, start the day. Oh, okay, no bot. True. True, true, true. Alright. <clears throat> We have intel on everything, says Glaro. He's got the eye in the sky. All right, let's hop into a pretty high-level match here between two fairly well-known players. In the bottom left, we've got Mr. Mishi. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Mishi. And his opponent to the right, Doohoo. Okay, okay. Off the bat, my heart is with Doohoo here. Rocking that Owl Fox. I would love to see that work, but the problem is, here's the problem. The problem is I always get really hyped when I see multiple tier three in decks. And uh, let's, uh, nine times out of 10, it never gets to that point where it's relevant. But Doohoo is a, for the most part, kind of defensive macro player. Uh, so if anybody's gonna pull off this kind of strategy, it's gonna be him. The idea, with the multiple tier three here is to have options. Uh, it's very expensive to have these options as you're you're taking up two deck slots, which is huge. Uh, however, he's got the flexibility uh, to pick Fox if that's what the situation needs, or try to mass up the Owls um, in the later game if that's where it goes. I kind of like to see personally. I like to see Owls with Falcons because uh, I think they, they kind of go hand-in-hand hand fairly well, and, and Owls without Falcons are vulnerable to an opponent having Falcons like we see Mishi with here. Um, but it definitely could work. And and really, I think what Doohoo wants to do is get up to like one to two bases, get out of Fox, deal some harassment with that, and then take the game uh, to the late game, and then just start massing up Owls. Uh, meanwhile, Mishi's got more of a tried-and-true uh, meta deck, in my opinion, uh, I, I'm in I'm in the camp that moles are good this patch. <laughs> Some people disagree, um, which is totally fine. But I think Squirrel Mole uh, does pretty well. Uh, so she has got that going for him. He doesn't have that, like, hero tier 2 in the early game. You know what I mean? Something like a chameleon. Uh, the falcons can work, as we see here. Mishi is going for uh, some quick falcons. <clears throat> you gotta be really careful with those things, though. They are... Uh, you know, flying paper airplanes, essentially. They'll go down very, very quickly if you're not uh, really on top of your micro. However, Mishi will absolutely be on top of his micro as he's one of the uh, top players. Uh, meanwhile, Doohoo is going for that quick uh, snake, which I feel like is better in the early game. That snake's going to be able to harass uh, pretty effectively, especially on this patch uh, where snakes apply that, uh, that slow as well, right? So imagine you get one snake tag on a falcon or something. Uh, nine times out of ten. That's going to be all you need. <laughs> so we'll see how it plays out. Does Mishi know about... Yeah, Mishi knows about the second base of Doohoo. And it looks like he's going for like a one base play. Not necessarily a one base all in, you know. It is kind of a quick expansion from Doohoo. Uh, Mishi could certainly, if this doesn't go his way, you know, transition into a second base of his own. But this is a really hard second base to defend, but hold that thought. Here we go, the Falcons just deleting a snake right off the bat. Very nicely done. You know, maybe if Doohoo turned and fought, he could have traded that snake for a falcon. Keeps one of his snakes alive, but it's down here in the back at very low HP, not doing a whole lot. And this DPS uh, from the falcon is absolutely uh, outstanding uh, when they're protected correctly. And, and Mishi looks like he wants to get the second base. He's going to try to make sure Doohoo can't take too, too good of an engagement on him. He gets a... Gets one of those Falcons down with the snake. He really needs to get that other one, you know. His snakes are, are really prone to die here, you know. But if he's trading them for his opponent's Falcons, then it's not so bad. That one Falcon does manage 
uh, two die to poison snake, uh, snake poison <laughs> rather, and a couple of hits from some squirrels. Mishi does get that second base, and this is looking rough for Duhu. You know, he did trade out those falcons, however, he, in the first engagement, um, both his snakes went down without killing any tier two. On top of that, you know, Mishi got the expansion. That was another uh, big investment from Duhu there. Right. So Mishi not going to try to push the waters. Um, instead, he's just going to get a second base. Going to keep building tier 1. Just kind of reload. He's, he's very cognitive of that 5 minute mark coming up. He wants to get that maybe a couple farms, keep his economy going. Or perhaps he's just taking the second base to trick Duhu into thinking he's got some breathing room when he doesn't. You know, Mishi is going to commit to a couple farms here. I think that's perfectly reasonable. He's taken some very good trades thus far in the game. And doing the old uh, Artosis uh, homage, went ahead, get more ahead. And I think this is smart. Like, he's getting up to four Falcons. He's going to grab a couple farms. Duhu is not completely dead. He did manage to get that campfire. But I'm really impressed on, on how well the Falcons are doing against the Snakes, to be honest. I thought that... These engagements will be a little bit closer. However, it doesn't come down just to the unit compositions. It also comes down to the engagements. I think Mishi took some good engagements there, especially that first one where Duhu retreated and kind of just lost the snake for nothing. Going to try to get a tag on a Falcon if he's lucky here, but unfortunately hits the commander instead. The big engagement comes in. Duhu's got some toads. Going to hope to clear out some of the tier 1 of his opponents, but so much DPS coming from the air. Duhu knows it's too much. And Mishi takes the match. Okay. Let's keep it rolling. We have a really good lineup of, of replays tonight, to be honest. Let's hop into it. <clears throat> okay, spawning in the bottom, we've got Kalaru. And his opponent up top, Imari. Imari is a very old school, talented player as well. Uh, Kalaru, I think, falls into the newer category. However, he's, he's uh, very strong. Uh, he loves that artillery cannon. We're going to see that come into play this game, hopefully. Uh, both players rock and fox and two defense, so I'm already having fun. I hope you guys are too. And let's see how this one plays out. I mean, map looks decent, right? A little bit better for Amari, I think. Yeah, I, I think I like Amari's position better, but not by a whole lot. You know, both players have that easy access to the second base. Uh, what I like about Amari is he can't really complain with this kind of spawn. You know, you got a second base, you got a third base, and you got a cabin. Just in case you want to go for like a one, an extended one base play, um, or just take it for another farm, you know, in the later game. Meanwhile, Kalara does have a nice access to a second base and a very defensible position, especially uh, since he does have barbed wire. You know, a couple pieces right there on that ramp could do wonders, and a nice artillery cannon could also uh, be positioned uh, very effectively here on that high ground. Expanding to a third and fourth are going to be a lot harder for Kalaru. You know, when you have gristmills that are spawned this close together, it can be pretty rough. Amari opening up with that classic tier two build. Meanwhile, Kalaru hasn't really committed to a build. Okay, yeah, yeah. He took the gristmill. He put down one piece of barbed wire. <laughs> and he's going right for that arty. I wonder how Amari's going to react to this. She does have lizards. Uh, maybe you try to sneak in there with the chameleon and take it out? I'm not so sure, right? Like, I think in the later game, Kalaro can put together a better army since Falcons scale quite nicely. You know, I feel like Chameleons can scale to an extent. Um, but, you know, after you get like four, four of them, six of them, 
You know, especially when if your opponent's making a whole bunch of falcons, that, that's kind of where their their uh, usefulness kind of remains. However, chameleons are at the moment on this current patch one of the best bruiser quick tier two units. If you're gonna rush a tier two, I would recommend to be that chameleon. And here we go. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I figured if Mari would try to come in here and get that arty before uh, it finishes with the chameleon, she does indeed. And Claro actually doesn't sell it. So that is a ton of damage that Amari just got done there. Both Chameleons still alive. I think she lost a Squirrel or two, but she got several barbed wires. She got that artillery cannon. Uh, so Kalaru's in a rough spot. He does have going for him a second base here and a very defendable two base position with all the barbed wire with the double high ground. Um, so I, yeah, I'd love to see Kalaru just go for it on, on, ex on, uh, on the expansion farms. However, the Chameleons do make that barbed wire a little bit less effective as they can directly attack it. There's only a handful of units in the game that can actually directly attack that barbed wire. Chameleon is one of them. Uh, all the other units just kind of have to zap Bran again into it, you know. And uh, and eventually, it, when, when barbed wire deals damage, it also deals uh, damage, takes damage. Um, got that Fox Warren coming down for Galara. I think it makes perfect sense. I like where Kalaru is going with this. I like the overall strategy uh, of where uh, Kalaru is heading in this game. You know, try to get up that second base and try to get that tier 3. Meanwhile, Amari is playing very tried and true. Going up to a ton of chameleons here. Okay, decides maybe 6 is a bit crazy. Uh, instead goes for that fox. And Amari knows exactly what Kalaru is up to. You know, you don't even really need to get in here and scout the entire base to know that your opponent is going to really saturate that second and try to get a tier 3 unit in this kind of position. I mean, of course, it's always nice if you can, uh, but Amari can ex extrapolate uh, fairly fairly well, and I believe that scout did see that Warren. Yeah, it did, so Amari knows exactly what is coming up. And <clears throat> this is like a fox's worst nightmare here with all these mines and chameleons on the board uh, for Kalaru's opponent. Sweet, so we're going to see some fox versus fox play here. Both players... Got that tier 3 worn down. Uh, Kalaru's is going to be a bit quicker. Amari is keeping par on farms. Trying not to stay too far behind on that economy. And Kalaru's going to have a good... You know, 20 to 30 second lead on his fox. So maybe he can get in and get something done. But I love this. Oh man. Oh gosh, Kalaru. Please don't walk into that. Oh, uh, I wouldn't put a turret there. No, 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 because that kind of gives it away. Like, imagine, oh, I got my fox. I'm going to go deal some damage. And then you try to come in, and bam, you run into a bunch of chameleons and mines. However, that turret being placed there, it, it, at least in my opinion, like, if I'm the fox player, I'm going to stay away from that turret, right? Anyways, the chameleons moved. Uh, They're going to try to knock down that, that gristmill. She probably could have got it there, but didn't want to risk losing a chameleon. And look at this artillery positioning. Very nice. That's going to defend all three of these bases uh, quite well. Amari getting up to a third base also. So we're getting a, like a macro game here where, where the players don't really have late game compositions in my opinion, you know. I guess Kalaru a little bit more since he does have that Falcon and artillery. And imagine if he could get a cannon up there. That would be dope. All right, the Foxes are here. Kalaru gets a nice shot off on Amari. Amari needs to be a little bit careful. Put that Fox in the water. Let it heal up faster. Yes, I am doing a heavy set replay tonight. I normally try not to, but it was from uh, it was from somebody that that doesn't um, submit regularly, and I I always try to prioritize if there's like a random person I haven't really seen before, you know. So figure why not. <clears throat> I did play against heavy set on the ladder earlier, and he rushed me and failed, and then rage quit. <laughs> It was pretty hilarious. Okay. I like the usage of turrets here. This is getting rough. Like, look at all this barbed wire. Like, you are not going to attack into that. The artillery cannon did get up, uh, but but the skirmishes so far have been slightly out of range. Nice job from Kalaru here, finding a pocket to, to kill that pig. Oh, man. I was curious if he's going to try to, like, leave the fox up there. You know, so when... Amari's fox comes over and just kind of gets doofed upon. Another artillery cannon coming up. I think Kalaru is going to try to leapfrog these things forward. 
Now keep in mind the Falcons are very nice. Good pickup on that snake there by Amari. The Falcons are very nice and they scale into the late game probably better than any other tier 2 unit. However, keep in mind the Fox does one-shot those Falcons. The Falcons are very, very vulnerable against the Fox. And these Chameleons will slowly but surely uh, clean up all this barbed wire for free. As I say that, one Chameleon does go down to that artillery. Ooh, another one almost died but makes it out of there. Dude, this is an awesome game. Oh man, the artillery cannon doofing down on these turrets. Amari losing some value for free. I have no idea who's ahead anymore, to be honest. This is very close. Amari going for that double fox. The idea with that is, of course, you're going to get extra DPS in the main engagement. However, two foxes will one-shot uh, one of your opponent's foxes. Uh, somebody lost a commander there, right? I think Amari... Oh, Amari lost her commander, I'm pretty sure. Am I crazy? I could be crazy. But that went very, very well for Kalaru. I believe the reason is uh, Amari kind of rushed in full throttle and her commander went down. And lizards too. These artillery cannons are doing such a good job as Kalaru uh, expands up to four bases, kind of scattered on, on where the saturation is. That fox is so low. Amari's fox actually went down. I apologize, I missed that. And Amari's gonna try to bludgeon her way into this base from from uh, Kalaru, but with two artillery cannons coming down with a bunch of barbed wire with some good micro, uh, Kalaru shuts down that rush very nicely. And Amari's in desperation mode, kind of selling off everything that she doesn't need. I'm curious that she's keeping two of the foxes here. She paid for one. The other one is still in that red, in that supply block as we call it. Kalaru's gaining some confidence here, pressing forward. Does Amari have enough to continue this game, or is that going to be all she wrote? On the back of some good micro and some great defensive structure placement. Oh man, Amari ends up rallying. I thought this game was about to end. Keep in mind that army value graph does count all the defensive structures from Kalaru. You know, moving army-wise, they're kind of in a similar position. Man, Amari, I, I wish she would have sold off that second fox. There's no way that she's going to be able to afford that. Okay, yeah, she finally sells it off. Get a little bit of extra money for the things uh, that she can't afford here. Sometimes you just got to shop at that dollar store, you know what I mean? Okay, Mari looking for a pocket, looking for an opening to get in and deal some free damage with this fox, but this artillery, this barbed wire, Kalaru's fortress is really wrapped up tight here. Ooh, another pig kill there from Kalaru. That, that fox is so low, but it stays up. I don't even think the fox is the problem for Amari anymore, to be honest. I think the problem... Oh, man, that barbed wire on the top. That was a very smart play from Kalaru there. Uh, but I, I think the problem really is the artillery cannons, you know? Like, it is just so hard for Amari to take an engagement with those up. Amari actually, I think, won... Uh, Jet Erickson's uh, custom map tournament with some really well-placed artillery cannons. Artillery is really interesting because it's it's one of those units that you know most players agree in the meta is like kind of eh. Oh man, two HP on that fox. However, when you got a player like Kalaro who really knows how to use the artillery cannons, um, it can really make them shine and make you scratch your head and be like, why do more players not use this? I, I think it probably comes down to. Uh, you know, deck slots. It, it's really, it's kind of like in a card game, like Magic or something. It's like, well, oh, you should put this in your deck. Well, what am I going to take out? You know, you only have six units to choose from. Fitting in something like a double tier three or double defense or even an artillery cannon can be difficult. And I think Amari is just slowly getting starved out. Like, she can't really take any farms anymore because they're kind of under direct harassment area. 
uh, from the forces of Galaru, and losing that box is probably going to be what makes her tap out here. That's going to be it. Galaru uh, takes the map off some really cool artillery cannon and some great decision making. <laughs> Tosh in the chat. Claro's arties are better than other arties. Man, it feels like it. I've seen it. I, you know, I've seen high-level players use artillery uh, very effectively. Um, it it's, it's, could be one of those underrated units, perhaps. But anyways. Oh, wait. One second. Okay. Okay. I think I'm good. Uh, I do have a little bit more nerds hanging out now, so can I quickly... Oh, no, that's not going to work. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I already have it over here. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Bam. We have a new tournament coming up, guys, if you haven't heard about it. It's the Old vs. New uh, tournament being put together by Witty Pun 7 and I believe Blue Coon is also doing tournament organization slash planning. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, that's going to be on September 15th. It's going to be a ton of fun. Check out the Discord in the tournament section. There's a pinned message uh, that'll link you to it. And the idea with this one is it's going to be older players versus newer players. And it is going to be a blast. I'm hyped. I'm I'm a player in this tournament. I am not casting or hosting. I will be part of the old player team. So I got to get the rust off my, my play a little bit here. I was laddering a bit before I streamed today and had a, had a ton of fun, so you'll probably see me on that ladder uh, a little bit more leading up to the event uh, to not disappoint my uh, my fellow OG nerds. But yeah, September 15th. Uh, it's going to be on uh, Witty Pun 7's channel. I think he's looking at getting another caster possibly. Don't quote me on that. Uh, you can find more details in the tournament section of the Discord. Okay. <clears throat> A little advertisement break there. <laughs> Delphi is going to play a ladder. Hey, I was I was on today. I did all right. Won a couple, lost a couple, you know? All right, match number four. I actually used to stream ladder a lot back in the day. Uh, in the bottom, we've got the gentleman. You know him, you love him. And his opponent to the left, Dizon. Both powerful, well-known people in the community here. Uh, the gentleman's always been one of the top players. He's always very involved in hosting events and that sort of thing. Yeah, I used to um, do ladder and stuff on Tooth and Tail TV, but eventually I just kind of decided, I don't know, I, I, I want to keep this channel for like v events, you know, for the scene and, and like replay casting like this. I don't want to do like personal streaming on it, if that makes sense. But I do hop on every now and then. I, I don't play as often as I should, I do admit. But every time I do play, I have a blast. Tooth and Tail's such a fun game, especially if you're like me and you don't have like a whole lot of time to game anymore because you're an old man and have responsibilities. <laughs> like you can hop on. I mean, for like if you played Tooth and Tail for an hour, you could play you know, 10 matches pretty easily. You know, somewhere like 5 to 10, you know. I think that's one of the things that, that drew me to Tooth and Tail to begin with, is I'm such a big fan of turnaround rate in games. I, I love a quick turnaround rate. Um, turnaround rate basically just being, you know, how long the match takes, and then how long it takes to get into another one. And uh, Tooth and Tail is really, really good on that. <clears throat> Like, I tried the, the auto chess thing. I know that's like, I don't know if that's even the, the new big thing anymore. I think I'm a couple months <laughs> a couple months behind on that. It, uh, you know, the, the Dota League of Legends spin-off auto chess things. Like, I tried those, but, I mean, don't get me wrong. If you like it, you like it. Um, but for me, it was just, it just took too long, you know. Uh, I can't, I can't commit an hour to play one match. I don't, I don't have the time. D's on opening it up with some lizards here. Uh, meanwhile, gentlemen, opening Squizzard. Dizon gonna grab some Skunk. Skunk's kind of an interesting pick with the Lizards. Uh, we'll see how that pairs up. Dizon's gotta be careful. I don't think he's quite got that critical mass of Lizards to the point where you can kind of get over the defender's advantage. You know what I mean? Like, like going into that, any wasted DPS on that Grismo there uh, would, would be rough. 
And those lizards, of course, taking those couple pop shots before they close the distance against the squirrels. However, Gentleman's going really hard on lizards here. I'm kind of getting a bit worried for Dizon since he's going for skunks while Gentleman's getting so many lizards. And Gentleman's already kind of eking out a bit of a lead here in the early game. He did get that second base up very, very quickly. Already got a couple farms on it. So let's see how this plays out. I'm kind of more of a fan. Oh, wow, gentlemen went straight lizard here. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about the skunks versus a pack of lizards, man. Like, typically the, the skunk gas is not as effective against units like this. And, and Dizon went for Squizzard, um, which can do well against, like, pure lizard or pure squirrel. However, he doesn't have that mobility on the map, right? Because gentlemen's uh, group of lizards here is just so much bigger. And yeah, Dizon's going to commit to more squirrels. That is going to be better uh, on defense. And Dizon's got a pretty defendable position. Um, it, it's kind of more rough for the gentleman against a big pack of lizards, right? Because there's so many ways you can come in here. Uh, where Dizon's kind of just got to got to defend this like one arc. And, and he's kind of tight, you know, nice and tight there. Uh, grabbing that badger. And again, the badger can get overrun by a group of lizards. Uh, however, the Badger is a quite strong unit, and Gentleman hasn't seen this coming yet. I think he wants to try to come in and find a pocket with his units. When you build a whole bunch of lizards like this, um, you, you've kind of positioned yourself very nicely for a base trade. And and you can kind of get in and get out. Like, the idea is maybe Dizon's a bit out of position, so Gentleman comes in here, you know, gets in, deals some damage, gets out, uh, before Dizon can react. Gentleman still doesn't know about the tier 3, though. He is getting some chameleons, which are nice against the, the Badger as well. Badger Warren is up. Dizon is a bit blocked, though. Can't afford it quite yet. Both players really skyrocketing up in economy. There hasn't really been an engagement yet. I uh, I'd actually am kind of skeptical whether or not a single unit has even died this game. So both players in fairly even spots. However, once that Badger hits the board, if, if Dizon can defend it, correctly and especially with the gentleman kind of teching out of all the lizards i'm starting to like dizon's composition more and more Ooh, the wolf warren got thrown down i love i love a good wolf but it is gonna be a while until the gentleman gets that juicy wolf buff so oh the gentleman's finally gonna get in here and oh and he still doesn't get oh wait oh wait oh wait gentlemen Sneaky, sneaky. Now he's going to come in. He's going to see the badger. More importantly, he's going to see the badger is done and out on the map. How's he going to respond to this? He needs to kind of hunker down. He's going to try to counterattack with the lizards. Smart play from the gentleman. This is going to buy him some time. Dizon is going to come home to defend. You know, 15 lizards is enough to just straight up kill this Grismel. And Gentleman's going to go for it. Is he going to get it? It is so close, but Dizon is going to defend. And now the Gentleman's in a terrible position. He just lost most of his army here. Or at least a good chunk of it. And he didn't get anything done for it in the process. Dizon moving in with the Badger. The Gentleman needs a good engagement. He needs to target this Badger down with his Tier 2 units. But Dizon's just got so much on the board. Losing all those lizards and getting nothing for it was rough. But even if he got that that uh, that Grismo there, it really wouldn't have changed this attack. You know, it would have put Dizon in a terrible position. But Dizon would still have attacked in. You know what I mean? And the gentleman can't quite close the gla close the gap on this Badger. However, most of the other units have been taken, uh, have been picked apart, and that is a good way to get deal with the battery eventually does get it very nice from the gentleman he did lose his expansion however but now we're kind of in the reverse situation where Dizon does not have an army anymore he's got a big income here but he needs to get home immediately he's kind of still rallying he needs to go home he needs to sell off some warrants and just build whatever he can to brace for impact 
Uh, from the big counter attack, I'm up from the gentleman, but the gentleman's only got 10 seconds. He's got to go build a farm. He's digging. He's going to make it in time. All right, he's got a, a few falcons, a wolf, and a dream here. Let's see if he can make it work. That is so much tier one coming out from Dizon. And it looks like that's going to be all she wrote for the gentleman, Dizon. Taking a, a very nice victory here. It's the return of the Jink curse, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the, the Gentleman curse is... Um, when, when the Jint is going hard, like, he's always been renowned as one of the top players, and... When he goes hard on the ladder, you know, everybody loses, right? Uh, but it, it was funny because for a while, like, I had so many submissions where people are playing the gentleman, and it's all just the gentleman losing. So if you, like, tune in and watch the stream, <laughs> you'd be like, oh, man, the gentleman's getting beat up all the time. But it's really, like, he's one of the best players, and everybody knows that. So, oh, man, I beat him. I'm going to submit that replay, you know what I mean? Uh, some more great players in match number five here. Let's... Take a look. After this one, I might take a real quick uh, bathroom break. Probably less than a minute, and then we will keep moving forward. In the left, we've got Iris. Rocking that double tier three. And his opponent to the right. This guy. This guy with no squirrels, no lizards. Relying totally on moles here. And being AFK, looks like. What is this? Is this some kind of like meta strategy I'm not aware of? Is he gonna four farm boar? That'd be so amazing. No, unfortunately he was just AFK. Comes back into the game. So a little bit of a little bit of a early game boost here for Iris. As those couple farms were placed down uh, slightly late there by this guy. And that could definitely affect things, you know. That's a that's a boost that you're giving Iris, and Iris is Already a strong player that doesn't need a boost. And look at this crazy map here in the, in the bottom. So many doodads. Uh, it looks like the main attack path will, of course, be kind of this way. However, you could be sneaky sneaky and, and make your way through the maze of, of ruined buildings down here. <coughs> This guy was AFK and got a random deck. That makes a lot of sense. This deck does look quite random. Let's see if this guy can, can pilot it to victory. A little bit of scouting mine here. Let's see what's up. That's some decent vision. Hey, I'm gonna try to go for some quick chameleons, you know. This guy's in a, uh, definitely in a when life gives you lemons, make lemonade kind of situation. But Iris is having fun too, going for a very, very fast box. Is this guy gonna scout it? Ooh, okay. Maybe he's gonna try some kind of weird turret contain from the top, uh, top right here? Or I guess top left. Top right of Iris, you know what I mean. Still doesn't see that fox warren though. Mines are, of course, great against foxes, so are snakes, or chameleons, or turrets. So this guy does have some ways to answer it, but, you know, a lot of times Tooth and Tail comes down to information, you know, more than hard counters from units. You know, even if this guy does have a couple of units that do well against the fox, uh, if he's not aware of the fox until it's shooting at him, uh, that could most of the time not even matter. However, Iris <clears throat> was not keeping track of the scouting in the top here. And this guy is beginning his containment. He's not going to be able to get any closer, unfortunately, for him. There's no, like, cabin here on the high ground or anything. But the snake will be able to get this Grismel. And maybe if this guy's feeling uh, cocky enough, he can try to take that uh, to place some turrets a bit closer. Fox is on the way, but not exactly what you're looking for against turret mine snake here. Chameleon. Turret mine snake chameleon. These are all bad things for foxes. However, killing that Grismel, yeah, that does expand out this guy's territory since uh, Iris' territory is no longer contesting his. But he's got a very nice containment position already uh, underway. 
It's gonna be hard for Iris to leave his base with this fox. This guy's still not aware of the fox, but just kind of has what he needs to deal with it. All right, fox is up. Iris is one of the best fox players. So let's see what he can get done. Gets a couple tier two. Three tier two. Fourth tier two should go down. Only one stack of poison on that fox. It'll be okay. And Iris busts through those first initial turrets pretty nicely. This is starting to look good. This guy's plan is beginning to crumble apart. Ooh, losing his commander as well. That always hurts. However, he really doesn't have a whole lot of units to be microwing to begin with. Iris on the move. Using these lizards up front to kind of minesweep for him. Very smart. One stack of poison on that fox. This fox should go down. It's getting super low. Blech. There it goes. All right. Nice victory there for, for this guy. That was a huge investment from Iris. That was essentially 360 food because I don't think he's going to be able to make another fox out of that warrant. But then again, I guess if he sells it, he gets 180 back, so... Probably gonna go ahead and sell that fox more. No, he wants another fox. Um, at the cost of tier one here. This guy moving forward with strictly chameleon snake. Chameleons do very well against tier one, especially in small numbers. So this is not impossible for this guy. One chameleon goes down. However, this guy is doing phenomenal in this engagement so far, and he's going to go for it. <laughs> oh, man. With a random deck. With being AFK in the game for like 40 seconds, this guy still manages to take the win. Very, very nice. Okay, everybody. Give me a brief moment. And we will continue the show. Probably about a minute. Give me like one minute. One minute break. We'll keep going. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I am back. Where do we leave off? A little bit of pee boop action here coming up next. Let's 
Let's hop into it. All right, spawning in the bottom, we've got Peeboop and Red Dino. Their opponents up top, Kerpa and James. A little bit of 2v2 action here. Let's see. <laughs> Premium Bow. Premium Bow's like, I don't need squirrels. Toad Mole. Now we've seen, we have seen some toad shenanigans in 2v2 work quite well. Just kind of slamming toads into gristmills. That would be hilarious. And I'm not saying that's what they're going for here, but I am a little suspicious since we do see old Peeboop and Dino both with those toads. This is part of the first 2v Tuesday. Oh, awesome! Very cool. Alright, alright, where's that Molar? Okay. Premium Bow is proxying himself. He'll never know. It's on the high ground. Nothing super crazy just yet. It is fairly typical in 2v2 to see um, openings that aren't just straight eight farms. Because if you get like four or five farm double rush from both your opponents, there's really not a lot you can do about it. Um, so players are a little bit more careful, a little bit more conservative in the early game, getting out a couple units, making sure uh, they're not gonna die to any shenaniganery. And Dino pushing forward a little bit. Gonna be backed up here from Premium Bows, Moles. Let's see. Let's see. Are they gonna commit? Nothing crazy yet. No tier twos, no expansions. Everybody just kind of building up. Here we go. James is gonna take that uh, 12 o'clock base. A little bit of defense thrown down here from Pibu. Dino just kind of poking out in the map. Some nice micro there. Alright, nobody's really feeling confident yet enough to hard engage. Let's see how hard James commits on the second base. He's got a couple farms so far. Meanwhile, Premium Bow's grabbing his second base of his own. No tier 2. Okay, no. James uh, recently threw down a tier 2 warrant. He's got his chameleons uh, almost on the way here. And some falcons out from Dino. So we're just kind of building up. Nothing crazy just yet. A few skirmishes, but nothing super, super impactful. See how this plays out. Let's see. What are all these? What is uh? What's Kerpa up to? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. James is getting uh, skunks as well. Let's see. Kerpa and Dino both still need expansions. This map is pretty heavily favored for premium uh for premium bow and Dino here, as uh. As they have most of the Grismals on their map, on their side of the map. Like, Kerpa doesn't even have access to a second base, which is very rough. However, they could go for a very strong 1-2 to two base all-in and, and try to end the game that way. It's kind of how it works in, in Tooth & Tail. It can seem busted at, at first, but it, it kind of plays out if you're, if you're good enough to kind of adjust your play style. You know, based on, based on the map gen, if that makes sense. Big engagement coming in here. And will Blue and Green be able to push through so many turrets here from Premium Bow? And a lot of Falcons staying alive for Dino. Pushes back this heavy Tier 1 force from their opponents. Okay, looks like they're gearing up again. This is kind of rough for Blue and Green as they're really in this position where they've got to stay aggressive. They want to try to take this fight outside of that turret nest, however, and they're doing a good job thus far. Most of the Falcons in the air, a couple of them starting to go down. As Blue and Green crush their way forward and get some damage in here. Nice job picking up that Grist Mill. Now, yeah, now they're going to retreat back. I think that's smart. They're just going to kind of regroup and come back in. And try to keep the momentum of this push going. However, they got to be careful because when they start moving up this close, 
Dude, do not underestimate that DPS from these three turrets in the back. Man, one HP on that Falcon. Dino keeping him alive. And the Fox is here for premium bow. Snuck that Fox out under my nose. So surely the opponents have no idea. Where even is that Warren? Oh, there it is. Do they know? Yeah, they don't know. Okay. They probably know here soon, however, as Premium Bow is starting to pilot this fox around. Uh, try to start picking up some fresh kills. Yeah, I believe they do know because James is throwing down mines and terrors like that. That'll just instantly delete that fox if it runs up onto the hill. I wonder if it's smart to keep attacking into these turrets, though. I'm a little bit... A little bit hesitant on this. Like, I'd like to see him maybe come over and attack these these uh, soft underbelly type bases. However, if they do that, they might force the game into a base trade. Well, we got a tier 3 from James at the boar. Very tried and true on this patch. Another pair of mines goes down. Premium bow's gotta be careful. Oh, man. Oh, pee boop. I was getting worried for a second there. Yeah, James, like, I feel bad for James, man. He's gotta, they gotta commit. I, I think it, it would probably be, it would probably behoove blue and green. Very nice there by Premium Boat picking up those mines with the, the moles. I think it would behoove them to kind of, like, go to that 3 o'clock attack path, you know. And even if the game does go into a base trade situation, you can kind of pick up grist mills as you go. Try to win it that way. This position up here is very, very defendable, especially with the balloon going down. Dino's got an owl on the way as well. But James's boar's almost here. This has got to be the trigger for the big move out. James and Kerba pushing forward. It is an absolute bloodbath here. Falcons are starting to fall. So many turrets. However, the board does a phenomenal job just melting through those. With all that structure for it, man, that, that, they just got instantly duped upon here by the board. Keeps the board alive as well. I think that's really smart to kind of babysit this boar, seeing how he did invest in so many pigeons. Oh, man, our James and Kerpa busted through. Premium Bow's box goes down as well. This might just be too much. Premium Bow, going to try to be sneaky and maybe get a victory through moles. But I'm kind of glad this game is going in blue and green's favor because it kind of highlights what I was talking about earlier where, you know, sometimes the map does look busted, but you can still figure it out. You can still win. However, I am not so quick to count Premium Bow and Dino Al. We've seen a million matches where Premium Bow's in this kind of situation. It manages to come back somehow. Annihilates Kerpa. It is down to just James. However, Dino uh, goes down as well and, and Premium Bow... <laughs> With the six moles against this proper army of his opponent. No, James. James is going home to try to defend. I wonder if he should have just tried to kill Premium Bow's main base. These moles do so much damage. Oh my gosh. Of course. Of course, Premium Bow's going to win. Oh, barely. Barely gets that victory off some good decision making uh, when the world was falling apart there. <laughs> Hey, see you later, Pancakes. It's always a pleasure. With moles of spare? You had like one mole of spare. If that. Oh, give me one second. Okay, match number seven. Let's hop into it. I thought for sure Premium Bow was gonna lose that one. I was pretty convinced. In the bottom, we've got James, our recent champion, and his opponent to the right, streamer, organizer, Big Pimpatosh, aka Witty Pun Seven, with the three tier three. Oh man, I am I am quite delighted tonight in in the in the offerings in the in the. <laughs> And the sacrifices here. These are good. Alright, Tosh. If you actually build all three of these tier 3 units, I would be so happy. 
Squirrel Pigeon Chameleon's kind of the like serious core of the deck, it looks like. You know, get through the early game, you know, nine times out of ten with this kind of build, he's probably rocking that Squirrel Pigeon Chameleon. Maybe one of those tier three, whichever one uh, the situation calls for. But getting out all, all three, that'd almost be like a heroic achievement. Meanwhile, I think James' deck looks pretty strong. Uh, James is one of the believers in the current Patch Toads. I do, I think I'm in the camp that Toads do feel a little weak, but I don't think they're like unplayable. You know, we, we saw James use uh, Toads quite a bit in the 12 duels and, and do very well with them. Uh, both players grabbing that quick chameleon. Uh, James opting uh, for even like more of a greedy opening on top of that. Uh, tier two, typically the build is like eight farm tier two, tier one. Uh, but he went 8 farm tier 2 into a grist mill. Uh, so very, very greedy here. And Tosh grabbing this uh, sneaky, sneaky base. Now, this could backfire if he takes it too early in the game. Okay, I was going to say if, like, James hadn't scouted this yet, you know, and he, he has to, like, come over here and scout since we're still in the early game, he'd probably catch it. But I don't see why James would ever really go back over there. Uh, so it's pretty likely that Tosh will get away with that. You know, because James got, like, three bases right here. Like, James is spawn. You cannot ask for a better spawn than that, right? Like, three bases, all tucked together into a nice high ground. He's even got water outside his base. And that's beautiful. And then a fourth and a fifth over here, if it ever comes to that. Tosh in a bit of a harder spot. However, it could have taken that as his natural. And, um, grab that campfire as well. Hold that thought. James is on top of his due diligence here. And does spot that grist mill. So he's going to send his forces right on over to deal with that. That's going to be a huge blow uh, for Tosh. There's really no way he can salvage this. The only thing Tosh can do is try to come over here and sell those farms. But no, James actually pulls his army back after Tosh kind of feigns an attack to the front. Uh, good, good decision making there by Tosh. Gets that Badger Warren down as well. Balloon going down for James. It's going to be pretty important for James to scout this uh, this Badger War. And I think James is kind of <clears throat> relaxed. He's like, oh, I can come over here and take out this base whenever I want. Yeah, just going to send a couple chameleons over there to get the job done. Um, but James does not know about this Badger. In fact, I don't think James has really gotten a scout in in a little, in a little while to his opponent's base. That was a big blow to Tosh, however. You know, losing that Grist Mill and those two farms. I think Tosh is in a kind of all-in position now. You know, he's going to have to make this Badger push work. Good job handling money. Make sure not to uh, block that Badger. He's going to be able to uh, begin production ASAP. Alright, let's see it. Tosh is putting together a strong army. Tries to grab another uh, hidden base over here in the 10 o'clock. Oh man. Ugusabov, thank you so much for the cheers, dude. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Keep it up, he'll notice eventually. Yeah, I, I, I disabled alerts and stuff, man. Thank you, though. That is really awesome. I, I, I definitely appreciate it. All right, James moving forward. Nice engagement here. Going to try to bust in uh, before the Badger uh, is up and running. Gets a lot of damage done. However, the Badger is here. And a Badger and some Pigeons and some good Micros, all you need. In a lot of situations, Tosh is going to uh, defend for now. I'm really surprised Tosh didn't just try to, like, YOLO push after that. Is he aware of the balloons? He's aware of one of them. Like, one balloon probably wouldn't stop me, but two balloons would piss me off a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, it, Tosh is actually clawing his way back into this game. You know, that was a strong attack from James, uh, trying to take the wind 
out of Tosh's sails before that badger got up. But over here in the side, man, Tosh is trying to make up for, for some of this lost money uh, just by going super, super hard on that on that base. And it's going to be hard for James to read, but James... Oh, man. I'm actually super impressed by this, by James. A lot of players do not do this enough. You know, just checking the map. And to be fair, um, James should be a little bit more paranoid than normal since he already caught Tosh trying to do a sneaky base. So very good scout there by James. Yeah, I, I agree, Tosh. I, I think the one balloon, I'd probably maybe try the push, but two balloons right there through that water. Oof. All right, here we go. Big engagement coming forward from James. Nice micro back uh, from Tosh. Manages to pick up a chameleon. A lot of the tier one going down in that process, though. But now Tosh is actually in a good spot. He's got the higher tech army. He's got a, a strong farming second base that is not going to mine out anytime soon. James pushing in again. Lots of tier two. These falcons will will uh, deal incredible damage to a badger very, very quickly. I remember that was one thing I thought was kind of interesting back in the day where badger was like super, super meta. You know, I, I started experimenting with some falcon openings and and sure enough, yeah, if you, if you got some good falcon count and, and some good positioning, uh, you can uh, delete that badger very, very quickly. All right, James moving forward. Nice micro here by Tosh. However, he's losing most of his army besides the Badger. This Wolf's about to be up though, and when the Wolf comes out, the Badger will get steroided. Steroided, well, we'll get that steroid buff, uh, which will really increase the DPS. But that's like all he's got. James is just running out of front line here for his Falcons. Oh man, and here's the powered up Badger. Already revved up too. Just getting work done. This is looking good for Tosh. As long as he can keep that badger buffed up. Sometimes, yeah, like right here, other units will get the buff. You gotta be careful about that. He can keep this badger buffed up and revved up. It's gonna do a ton of damage. Can't quite get the right angle to target down that balloon. And there's a lot of uh, buffering units here uh, for James. And that balloon is very deadly to the badger. If you're not careful, that balloon will delete that badger very, very quickly. And the boar is here for James. Pushing forward. Is he gonna really commit to this attack? The wolf goes down, that is huge. However, the Badger remains the main threat here for Tosh. He doesn't have much of a supporting army, but he does have a really strong economy. And the Badger does go down as well. James looks like he's about to flamethrow his way to victory. Very close back and forth game. To be honest, I kind of counted Tosh out when his first hit in base got, got uh, wrecked upon. But once he got that second one up and his economy started stabilizing, I thought he uh, had a really good shot in that game. Very close match. Okay. Again, I've got more viewers now. Um, so, once again, thank you everybody for tuning in on such short notice. I really appreciate it, as always. Thanks again to Goose of Bombs for the donation, man. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, but while I've got everybody gathered here together, let me do a quick shout out to the next upcoming event in Tooth and Tail. We've got the old vs. new Tooth and Tail community tournament. It is being put on by Witty Pun7, aka Big Pippintosh, the Badger player you just saw in the last match. And that is going to be on September 15th. And the idea with this tournament is it's going to be uh, older players, players that were around in like the alpha or right after launch, uh, versus newer members of our community. Uh, who've maybe been here like for the past year or something, uh, you'd have to ask Tosh or look at the details a bit uh, more closely to figure out what exactly, where, where the cutoff is for the old versus new. Um, but it's going to be a ton of fun. Basically, 
Uh, Blue Coon's got a very complicated algorithm on how everyone's going to be matched up, but I think I get the gist of it, which is essentially we're going to have teams of the old players, teams of the new players, and players are going to be seated or, or kind of ranked on their team based on their KML uh, ladder ranking. Uh, which is the Kalaru uh, ladder ranking that I think the community kind of likes a bit better than just the traditional, you know, ladder score. Um, and players will be seated against one each other, one another from both teams in the fairest way possible. They're going to play best of threes, kind of score points for their teams, and uh, whoever comes out on top uh, will we'll get the bragging rights. Uh, so I'm super hyped for this one. Um, I am... I. Pretty sure I'm not hosting or casting this. Uh, I am a player on the old, the old school team, uh, so uh, you'll probably see me on that ladder trying to get trying to get my skills up to par here to compete. Um, check out the tournament uh, section of the Pocket Watch Discord for more information, uh, or hop on Woody Pun Seven's uh, Twitch stream. He, he's basically streaming tooth and tail like every single day. So if you have any questions, I'm sure he'd be be happy to chat with you live on the air but i'm really excited about it and again uh as always big shout out to glorious afb uh for this wonderful artwork and i know he's got a twitter i gotta, I gotta find this twitter i don't want to spend too much time digging i, I actually just want to like link his link his twitter um on my page let me see yeah here we go here we go so he goes by Wolf Dog Art. Um, so please, 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 if you guys use Twitter, um, you know, give him a like or a follow or however it works on on Twitter. Um, I, I'm sure he'd really appreciate it. Uh, Glorious AFB is always, always, always down to, to make wonderful artwork like this uh, for events. Um, so. As a community, let, let's say thanks and, and hype up his Twitter or wh however else we can support him. Um, but anyways, guys, I'm really excited for this tournament. It's coming up very, very soon. I, I think the way that the new balance patch is planned, it should be like a few days after the balance patch. And I think I heard Tosh on a stream earlier talking about that's kind of a way to like even the playing field a bit. You know, everybody's going to be kind of playing on the fresh patch. Uh, so that'd be a lot of fun. So, all right, let's keep things moving. I'm going to do one more and then take a quick, quick break and grab a glass of water because I just finished my my yingling. <laughs> and I'm out of beer now, unfortunately. Uh, anyways, match number eight. Okay, so this match uh, was one of the 2v2 RNG tournament matches uh, that Premium Bow uh, organized and I hosted. Um, so these are, this is a loser's bracket match that was not casted. So keep in mind these are random teams and random decks. Um, but this one's submitted, I think they thought this was a lot of fun, so I figured I'd show it off tonight. In the bottom we've got Mr. Ziggy and Rockus Pockus. And their opponents up top, Premium Bow and Kerpa. Okay. Was this random? Uh, I wasn't in that tournament. Yeah, maybe this was the wrong wrong match. Because looking at it, I was like, wait a second, this does not look random. Okay, so forget about what I said earlier. Uh, maybe I got maybe I got the replays mixed up. Regardless, we have another 2v2. And a four-farm double here from Premium Bow in the bottom uh, with some lizards. Yeah, Premium Bow. Wait a minute, I wasn't in the tournament. Sure you were, man. You were organizing it, you were playing, you were casting it. I remember you were casting it, too on Premium Bow TV. It's a nice little aggressive opening here from Premium Bow. Man, that's a shame. Did I really mess that up? Let me see. I must have messed it up. Yeah, because I had this... I had this, uh... Oh! Wait a second. Wait a second, guys. I think I screwed up even harder than that. Because this is match number eight. Yeah, okay, whatever. We'll roll with it. We'll roll with it. I, uh... I, I misnamed something. So in the bottom, we have Mr. Ziggy and Rockus Bacchus. We'll just go with it. And in the top, we've got Kerpa and Premium Bow. So there is a 2v2 unaired 
the tournament match coming up earlier, but I mislabeled this one and thought it was Pro Camp versus Mr. Ziggy. Because I am amazing. Uh, I think Mr. Ziggy submitted this. Premium Bow's getting nervous. 2v2 match that he didn't submit. Going for that four farm double. Okay, Kerpa meanwhile is backing that up with a proxy mole war, and I give this early game a bit better justice than I did last time. Uh, so one mole comes out, weakens up that pig a bit. The other mole's gonna try to get it done, but doesn't quite get there in time. Premium Bow is a little bit late to the party. Kerpa should have waited for the lizard reinforcements before going in, so this rush got a little bit botched here. And this is turning out very nicely uh, for Mr. Ziggy and Rockus. Uh, taking very little damage there and, and handling that, that rush uh, quite well. Okay, let's see where we go from here. This map looks pretty decent. Everybody's got access to a second base, which I always like to see. It looks a bit better for red and blue. Um, then again, this high ground's kind of interesting. Like, this technically is a base for green, right? Because you can't get to it that way. However, this base is pretty contestable. It's kind of more in, like, premium bows territory. But it's also very, very close over here. And Ziggy's got things like balloons and Artie and Ferret that could all just attack over that wall. Uh, Premium Bow's trying to find a way to be sneaky with these lizards. Can't quite get it just yet. Meanwhile, a big attack coming out from Rockus here. And Ziggy. Still not eight farms for everybody yet. There we go. Ziggy's got, got his farms here now. Rockus thought about expanding, but then changed his mind. All right, Premium Bow's got a lot of money. There's the wolf. Ziggy coming in for an attack, but he's kind of in a 1v2. His partner's not with him here. I think Rockus is trying to do the same thing Premium Bow's trying to do earlier, find a way to wiggle wiggle around in the back door over there. But there, unfortunately, on this map is no such area to do so. I am on the wrong thing. Bam! Okay. Alright, big engagement coming down here in the center. But they back off for now. Suddenly Kodo, but I know, right? Everybody saw my, uh, my AFK prevention on, on WoW there. <laughs> I thought I was being slick, but I had my OBS in the wrong thing. All right, moving forward. Red and blue pushing, but gonna get caught back for the moment. I think that was smart because Rockus was ready to flank on the side. This is a really good defensive line from red and blue though. And they have so many, like, defenses are really interesting in Tooth and Tail. Uh, most of the time you got to be careful with it. However, I actually really do like things like this when you're guarding so many Grismals with it You know what I mean like this little bit of barbed wire in this balloon helped defend like four bases here really Five to six if you if you count over here Premium Bow's got his wolf on the board and is gonna have it uh, increase his farming production rate Meanwhile, what other compositions we got? The boar just hit the field. So green and yellow are starting to put together a pretty nice army. These ferrets, unfortunately for Ziggy, are not going to really help against um, the defenses here of his opponent. All right, the, the owl warrens are starting to go down. So it looks like we might actually get into a late game 2v2 here. As I say that though, a huge push is coming out from green and yellow. Moving forward, busting right through that defense. This board doing so much damage. The wolf is here, but there's not a whole lot of units to buff. And that, is that gonna be it? Kerpa doesn't have a whole lot left. Premium bow. He does have a wolf, but he's got a couple buffed up units. Gonna do a nice job cleaning up a lot of these pigeons here. 
However, the force for green and yellow is absolutely massive. Kerpa sent to the kitchens. And Premium Bow doesn't have the wiggle room to run around and, and do the, the crazy things he's known for in these 2v2 games. Uh, keeping himself alive. And green and yellow, I believe, should be winning this here shortly. Yeah, Premium Bow's got nothing left. He's going to have to tap. Nice victory there for Rockus Bacchus and Mr. Ziggy. Okay, well, I wanted to get in a Mr. Ziggy game. It wasn't the one I had in mind, but there it is. All right, all right, real, real quick break, guys. I'm just gonna grab some water, and I will be right back. thing there. I'm off my game. It's been too long. I'm rusty. I didn't get a water. I got a LaCroix. I'm not gonna lie. I drank these terrible things. My wife hates them, so they're all for me, so it's quite nice. All right. Let us hop into match number nine. Spotting on the left, we've got Heavy Sets, the infamous ladder abuser, and his opponent. In the bottom right, we've got Ab. And typically I don't show games with heavy sets, um, but I wanted to make an exception because I hadn't seen Ab before. However, Ab could totally be somebody, like, <laughs> somebody could be like, oh yeah, that's QQ or something. You know. Expect a desync at, at the end of this game. Yeah, I know, right? Like I said, I played heavy set on the ladder earlier. He, uh, he pretended like he was going eight farm. Flopped into a 5 farm double as aggressive as possible. He did like some damage, but I held it off. And then he just quit. He just, eh, disconnect. Um, so we'll see how this game plays out. Uh, I did want to air it, as I love uh, unique submitters. So if you're somebody who's watched this show a lot and haven't submitted, I, I really do encourage you to submit. I always try to prioritize names I'm not familiar with as I know most of you regular nerds pretty well at this point in the, in the scene. Uh, so anytime I see like a name I, I don't recognize, I get excited. All right, eight farm chameleon opening from Ab over here. Uh, standard stuff, I think that's actually a smart play for this map. Meanwhile, Heavy Set is going to a quick expand and some mines, which again, I, I think is pretty fine for this map. It's kind of a big, awkward map with, with difficult rush distances. But he's like really, really committing uh, to some defenses here. So, I'm thinking he's gonna go straight for this fox. But if I'm Ab, I'm just gonna attack down here, right? We're, oh, actually, you know what? He's, uh, he's totally walled off. If you look at the mini-map, this is the only entrance into his base. So the, I actually don't mind that play at all. Uh, I would have rather... I would have gotten the Fox Warren first and then thrown up the defense, though. Just because it would have been faster, right? Because this is 180 food worth of defense, so he could have thrown that Fox Warren up and then placed the defense down and still been safe. However, that is still a little riskier. Ab moving out with some chameleons. 
Onyx Smurf, yes! <laughs> yeah, hey, listen, Kalaro. Don't give people ideas, okay? It is pretty easy to, to edit XML files. Oh man, Ab! Get it, Ab! Trying to, trying to be a bit sneaky there and, and hit just barely in range. But the fox is almost out and about. And Ab has no idea. I mean, Ab's got lizards, Ab's got chameleons. These are all decent things against fox. Ooh, is Ab gonna get in here and scout it? 9 HP, I think. Oh, 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 man. Just barely. However, only getting a good 25 seconds notice before the fox hits the board. But now at least they know who's coming. So we'll see how they decide to respond. Yeah, going for some more chameleons. Uh, getting a couple uh, lizards as well. I think that's a smart plan. All right, here comes a fox. Ooh, nice chameleon trap, though. Is heavy set gonna fall for it? Oh man, I would love it. Oh, oh, oh! Bam! Gets it! Beautiful. Sign my mouse pad, Ab. That was amazing. Now Ab knows the brunt of the force has been defeated and moves forward on top of all of this defense. Bludgeoning their way forward, getting a lot of uh, casualties, but making it, getting it done. <laughs> it's just gonna slap down Heavy Set from here, I'm pretty sure. Which everybody's nice and happy to see. And surprisingly, no desync. Ab takes it fair and square. No red plug. I know, I'm as surprised as you guys. Alright, we got a couple left. This is the RNG tournament game I was talking about earlier and got very confused about. This looks this looks more correct. Okay, in the bottom we've got Kerpa and Ramon Corona. And in the top left we've got Pile and Washo. Uh, so this match was submitted to me, I believe, by Ramon. I could be wrong. Um, but this is one of the games that we weren't able to show live. And this is from the loser's bracket of the 2v2 random tournament. If you guys haven't seen that, check out my VODs. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That was Premium Bow's uh, brainchild. Uh, he did all the legwork and TO on that one. I just grabbed the, the microphone and casted it. Uh, but essentially the idea was random teams every round and random decks. So let's see how these players manage uh, to do this here. Who's got the best random deck? Maybe Washo? No. Well, I think probably Ramon. Like, Chameleons are really good. But Washo also has Chameleons. I don't hate Pyle's deck either. Like, Badger Owl is a bit silly. But Squirrel Toad Falcon is not a bad core. Uh, no Pigeons on their side of the board, unfortunately. So let's see how this plays out. It's actually kind of a gentleman's agreement in the early game here. A little bit rare for 2v2, but I think it makes sense on this map as we are pretty far away. So it looks like most players hopping up to that 8 farm relatively quickly. We see some tier 2 on the way from Washo here. As far as the map goes, definitely better for green and yellow. But Washo and Pyle can get out here and take some bases. They got this nice 12 o'clock up here, and they both got a natural... That's kind of reasonable, but they're gonna have to like this is kind of a pain in the ass for Washo to be honest to get to this natural and he's got to go all the way around like that like there's no quick little path like there for example so once Pyle and Washo expand they're really gonna have to put their foot down you know in like this kind of area you know like that's gonna be the battle line but Pyle's already bringing up a balloon which kind of makes me scratch my head a little bit. Since that balloon's only really protecting the main bases, so maybe Pyle wants to try to get into a fast owl or something like that with this balloon. 
or maybe he wants to kind of leapfrog it forward as, as they take expansions. On the other side of the map, Ramon Corona already halfway done with his second base. Their team getting some tier 2 out as well. Kerpa putting together uh, some decent barbed wire to try to ensure there's no kind of uh, runarounds with these lizards here. And a 12 o'clock position getting saturated as well. So both teams about the same on economy for the moment. Just kind of building up. This might become a long game. And I'm worried for red and blue if that's the case. Because green and yellow uh, really have the map advantage in that kind of situation. Owl being thrown down for Washo. This top base did get scouted by Kerpa. Uh, so they are hip to it. And red and blue are quite aware of this forward base. A little bit of the switcheroo here from Ramon, though. Selling off a couple farms right after their opponent scouts it. Love the artillery cannon balloon combo right here. Uh, that's going to be so hard to deal with. Like, look at that. Kalaru, come on. That's got to be, like, the th type of thing you dream about, right? Like, it's got a moat. It's got a tree line. I mean, this thing, this thing is set. What, what, what else could you really ask for here? All right, yeah, we've got a macro game on our hands by the looks of it. Players starting to get into their tier three. Pyle's going to have to commit to his second base here shortly. He's floating quite a bit of food. I wonder what he's got all this food for. Maybe he just wants to dunk it down onto his second base once he gets it. He tries to uh, take that Grismo, gets immediately spot spotted, but starts it again. And I'm thinking maybe he's trying to save up some money to, like, uh, throw down some balloons. You know, right after he gets this base, throw down some farms too. We did pass that five minute mark, so Kerpa and Pyle really, really need to expand. So with Pyle trying to take this base up top, he's gonna really threaten this second base from Kerpa, but we got a big engagement going down here. The Badger is on the board for Kerpa, and Pyle's got one as well. Let's see, the Owl went down. That base got denied again, and Pyle's Badger goes down as well. Kerpa keeping his Badger alive just barely. As the remaining forces of blue and red move in, that Badger eventually falls. Do blue and red have enough to deny this base? No, they don't. They're going to have to back out. And if green and yellow chase, they might be able to keep this up. Nice micro from Pyle, keeping alive uh, several of these very, very wounded Falcons here. Yeah, this is rough for red and blue in my opinion. It's going to be really hard for them to expand. Maybe Pyle should have tried to take this base over here. It seems fairly uncontested. You know, trying to get that base or, or even that one seem, seem very, very difficult to do in this kind of position. All right, Kerpa setting up maybe for another attack, but this is actually a pretty decent army that blue and red do have, like a lot of expensive units. However, Pyle's starving. This is not good for him. Needs to get up a base ASAP. We've got 30 seconds left, that artillery cannon is somehow contributing in this fight. The range on that is absolutely insane. Pyle begins another Grismal, but they really, really can't lose it. Meanwhile, Kerpa with the counterattack with this pack of lizards here going into the main base of his opponents as red and blue trying to hold their ground here and defend oh but he snipes out pile before that grismal was done eliminating all of pile's forces on the map 
And now Washu is in a 1v2 situation, although Kerpa is broke as well. Kerpa just made the plays to win the game here. Win the day. How'd I miss that, that rhyme? I'm very disappointed in myself. So we're kind of down to, to Ramon versus Washo here. I feel like Kerpa should be able to stay in this. Yeah, there he goes. Grabs that campfire. However, he doesn't have a whole lot left. The snake from Ramon, if it can stay alive, is going to do a ton. Wow, those toads did like nothing to it. A snake and a bunch of pigeons it can be very, very deadly in small numbers here. And green and yellow continue to push forward and eventually win the match. Very cool. Awesome game. All right, we got a couple more for y'all out here. Let's keep it rolling with match number 11. In the bottom left, we've got this guy and his opponent to the right, do who? All right, this guy's deck looking very meta. Really, both these decks look, look pretty strong. Um, I don't think the Fox Ferret style is as good as it was. However, it's not bad either, you know, by, by any degree. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Interested to see the, the Mind Balloon combo with it instead of, like, the turret. I, I'm actually really curious how this build's going to work out for Doohoo. As, as a Fox Ferret guy myself, I, I'm hoping to take some notes here. Meanwhile, this guy's deck is just so strong. Like, that is, in my opinion, like, one of the stronger decks on the on the ladder right now. I mean, maybe... I don't know. I would think maybe, like, Squirrel, Mole, Pigeon, Falcon, Chameleon, Badger. But I think Lizard, Skunk is, is good, too. Squizzard is strong, and, I, and I, I like where Lizards are this patch, but Lizards still have a hard time against Moles. Moles aren't picked up as often as they were, so there is that, but they also have a hard time against chameleons. However, lizards, just the flexibility that they give you to do flank attacks, uh, to do base trades, I mean, uh, really having lizards in your deck just opens up a whole different play style. Nice little uh, tech switch there from this guy. I got hyped because he had 180 food, so I was like, oh, 8 farm badger? But now just changing it up into a 8 farm tier 2 opening. And yeah, let's see how it goes from here. <clears throat> Doohu, with the, these mines placed near the Warren, those are um, to help deal with chameleons. And I think he placed those in response, perhaps, to seeing the quick tier 2, but then decided, eh, I feel like getting aggressive this game instead. And he's going to push forward. I mean, this one Warren here is not placed well for this guy. It is going to go down for free. And that's already a, a nice victory here for Doohu, but he's going to push it forward. And does he get a pig? He gets a pig, which is nice, but I feel like this guy traded phenomenally there. Yeah. So this guy kind of wins the engagement, you know, pound for pound. However, does lose a pig, does lose a warren. And those are big tempo things uh, that are going to slow this guy down. But this guy's still really going for a heavy tier 2 style. Uh, getting up those skunks kind of his... Uh, his key signature unit. Uh, this guy's very well known for his great skunk play. Yeah, very, very light on the tier one for the moment, trying to get out this quick tier two instead, uh, which is one of those strats that if you can pull it off, you're in a phenomenal spot because tier one builds so quickly, you know, but it does leave you vulnerable. Like if Doohu went into attack again, uh, this guy would be in a difficult position. Doohu, however, going for that fox, Fox going to do pretty good this game. There's no mines or anything like that from this guy. He does have lizards, chameleons, uh, so those can deal with the fox, but that's not like a hard counter, you know? That, that comes down to play. And this guy, I mean, Doohoo's aware of the chameleons from this guy, so he should be a little bit cautious of that, that chameleon ambush. Um, this guy never scouted the tier 3 warren, however, is still going to push in had a nice time to try to pressure an opponent who did go for a quick tier 3. 
Like, dude who's playing very, very greedy here, but he's doing it on the back of, like, pure tier one to try to uh, kind of make up for how greedy he's being in other places, if that makes sense. Like, he's going for the Gristmill. He's going for a tier three. So beyond that, he's, he was hoping he could hold on with Squirrel, Squirrel Mole, but this guy's army comp with all the chameleons and skunks is just very, very strong. The chameleons did go down, however, the skunks stay alive. And if you're this guy, I think you're okay with that. You know, the chameleons are kind of born to die, they're, they're frontline bruisers. It's always nice when you can restell them and keep them alive, but. Uh, you know, really what this guy's trying to do is keep these skunks up and running, uh, which is going to apply so much pressure to his opponent. Uh, the fox is on the way, it's been bought and paid for, so it'll be on the board in about 30 seconds, but the question is, does Doohu even have 30 seconds remaining in this game? As this guy pushes more and more forward. Yeah, I think the moral of the story that game was Doohu was trying to be uh, too greedy in too many different directions. You know, it's either you get the quick tier 3 or you get the quick second base. He was trying to go for both. I think he was hoping he dealt enough damage to this guy to where this guy would kind of leave him alone for a second. Um, and as Tosh points out in the chat, this guy is amazing with his skunk control. You know, you gotta keep that into account as well. Okay, we are on our last match of the night. I figured I would save a, save a good one for last. We got Pyle versus Mishi. Uh, both Pyle and Mishi have been top tooth and tail players in one era or another. So a nice little battle of the giants to finish the night off. While I have everybody, before we do finish the night off and everybody goes away, I'm gonna hype up one more time the next upcoming event in the scene, guys. We got the old vs. new community tournament uh, being put together by WittyPun7, aka Big Pimpintosh, and Blue Coon. That's gonna be on September 15th. Uh, check out the tournament section of the Discord uh, for more details. Uh, there's a pinned message to that chat. They've got their own Discord server up and running. Um, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff going on with this, but in a nutshell, players are going to join up on either the old team or on the new team based on when they started playing the game. And from there, uh, Blue Coon's kind of got like an algorithm to uh, determine how the players uh, from each team kind of match up and then those individual matches will be best of threes. Again, shout out to Glorious AFB for the wonderful artwork. Um, so look forward to that and sign up for it, man. It's always uh, it's always a blast. And uh, it's kind of like our second year anniversary tournament, really, too. You know, the, the, the big, big event. I don't know the exact... I should probably know. What's the exact release date of Tooth and Tail? September 12th, yeah. I remember... The release date was supposed to be sooner, but um, Brood War Remastered came out like when they originally wanted to release it. A little trivia for you, so they pushed it back a bit. But yeah, sign up for that event. Don't be shy. It's gonna be a ton of fun. I am gonna be a player in that event on the on the old folks team uh, rather than casting it. Uh, so I'm excited for that. I've only actually participated. I think I've casted or hosted like. Or generally been a part of like almost every Tooth and Tail event since launch, but I've only played in a few of them. Still gonna lose it for the old folks. I hope not. I am gonna be uh, I'm gonna be training up a little bit, make sure I'm in tip top shape. But all right, guys, let's end it on a high note here. In match number twelve, in the bottom we've got Pile and his opponent up top, Mishi. Okay, Pile. Uh, no lizards, no defense. That was the old school Pile style. If you ever heard anybody talk about that, he kind of paved the way with this uh, build where he basically run just lizards in like five defense. And it was hilarious <laughs> for a very long time and, and really hard to deal with. Uh, meanwhile, Mishi, uh, with a pretty solid core, just kind of reminds me of like a deck from a couple patches ago. You know, this like skunk, falcon, owl, balloon type of thing. Uh, but I think it's still perfectly relevant here. You know, the owl's not. You know, the owl and the wolf both are a little bit on the weaker side of tier 3 units, but they're still perfectly playable. So let's see how this match uh, 
goes down. No chameleons, no snakes. I kind of consider the chameleons and snakes to be like those early game tier 2 units that can really impact, you know, right at the beginning. Uh, skunks are kind of in that category as well, I, I suppose. Um, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of different ways this game could go. It, it's hard to... I don't want to speculate too much here in the early game. Uh, kind of interesting expansions here for Pile. It's kind of weird where it's like there's this indirect attack path that's kind of a direct attack path in a weird way, even though it's not the straight line, right? Because uh, you've got this road the entire way. Whereas you have this like direct attack path, but you gotta wade through the water to get there. Um, so I wonder which way the players are gonna go. Pile! Alright, alright. Pile's got some style here in the last match of the night, going for that hate farm woof. And Mishi should scout it immediately. Oh, but Mishi! I didn't even notice the Mishi moles! Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a disaster. No, no, my, my quick tier 3 brethren. Oh, that is huge. Pile taking, like, crippling damage right here at the beginning of the match. And his commander wasn't even home, so he couldn't uh, sell it. <clears throat> this is looking really, really good for Mishi. Pile's not dead, but kind of is. You know, like, I, it's hard to... Hard to articulate, I suppose. Like, if this was a lower level match, I, I would have a little bit more uh, faith in Pile here. But, you know, when you get to, like, the top level of play, you know, players really, really know how to abuse any kind of advantage. And if you give a guy like Mishi 180 food up, you're going to have a bad time. And Pile's aware of this and is trying to put together uh, a strong attack with squirrels and moles. But Mishi beat him to it. He already knows about this Chris Mill here. Keep in mind, Mishi's got his second base half-saturated. <laughs> and that's gonna be it. Man. Pile. Trying to be sneaky with the quick tier 3 war. And however, Mishi, with that mole in the back door, takes it out, takes the match. <laughs> that was hilarious. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for tonight. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in, as usual. Um, we got the we got the big patch coming up next. Um, so I think this is probably the last show I'm going to do on this current patch. Maybe. just I do have enough replays in the, in the stock to do another one, so I might. But the next patch should be relatively soon. However, once that new patch hits, uh, please send me new patch replays to TV at gmail.com. Uh, for future shows. Again, we got that balance patch coming up. We've got the Tooth and Tail anniversary in six days. We've got a new tournament. Uh, old players versus new players. Uh, so a lot of cool stuff coming on, going on in the scene. And I think let's give a raid over to Meowkaiser. Uh, Meowkaiser has been doing really well uh, streaming lately. Uh, a player a lot of us know from the Tooth and Tail scene. Uh, so let's go say hi to him, man. Uh, give him a big woof for me. You should absolutely play in tournament, Pibu. We shall train together. Let's give Meow Kaiser a big woof, guys. You're all a bunch of beautiful nerds. I will see y'all next time. Take care, everybody.